You know what's crazy? I like that what you said last time. Uh, well, you called it the style bender, so that's fire. Yeah, yeah. They've been bending styles all day, every day. I like that though, because it's SB19 and SB19 has so many different styles. So oh, it, yeah. it is dope that, that King Bro said style vendors. That's pretty dope because it's SB2. Do we mm-hmm. shout out CE? Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah, we you did. can, you can right. shout him out one more time, though. Yeah, shout out CE. Shout out to you. Super sticker. Shout out. Oh, love. yeah. I'll teach you how to speak Tagalog. Okay. I'll teach you how to stunt, huh? I'll mm-hmm. teach you how to stunt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right, yo. 2000 is fire, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thinking about it. Yeah. That. Yeah. Did we shout out Queen? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Shout out. What, Joey? Say, let's go. Just me. Yeah. Just me, Josie. Do, 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 do. All right, let's do this. So we're gonna do the Simon Servita. How I produced the number one song in the country, SB19. What? Yeah. Way, to fl- way to flex, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> So is he co-producing these? Like he got to be co-producing, right? Because the Mappa was a co-produce, right? Yeah, I think so. I think a lot of these is because, like, I mean, Pablo's putting a lot of input in this, right? So yeah, y- you got to give him some kind of producing credit. Yeah, hundred percent. But how come he doesn't say how I co-produced the number one song in the country, like on this title? I'm sure he'll say it. I'm sure he'll he'll give him his credit. In no, the no, title, you have yeah, to. Like, there's no yeah. choice because that's what Pablo does. He sends you the song and then you work with it. But I guess this one, this is the first song where Simon got with Pablo. This is like their first time working together, correct? Yeah, I remember them saying that in the chat last time. He wants to flex. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He wants to flex. I don't blame him, y'all. He's been part of some great songs, you know? Yeah. All right. Simon Servita. Let's go. 500k views in three hours? That's me. That's my name. I made this. <laughs> What's up, welcome back to the channel. My name is Simon Servita. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I produced the single for the number one boy band in the country. No cap. Which country? <laughs> Which is really cool because my ethnicity is Filipino. I was born in Canada, but both my parents are Filipino. The group is hey. called SB19. They're a P-pop group. That stands for Pinoy Pop. And the single I helped produce is called What? So I'm going to give you guys a really detailed breakdown on the song. And I'm also going to give you guys a behind the scenes on how we worked on it. Okay? Let's take a look. Easy. Yo, this dude is live as man. <laughs> yo, this dude is so live, yo. Yeah. He should be a DJ. He's he, so said, he said we too. So you heard that? Like, so he didn't just say yeah. me. He said we. And he got that Pinoy pride too. Holding yeah. it down. Both of his parents are Filipino. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. But born in Canada. And they said he doesn't speak the Gaelic. Remember last time I was like, he has to speak the language to be able to work on. It. But I understand because like he's just adding to the beat and to the sound so it's like a little bit different i guess you could say you know that's why he had to confuse him with the ja- jacara uh part of the mm-hmm. mama where he thought he was like he confused the songs you know what i'm saying i'd be surprised though if he didn't understand it he might not speak it but i know like especially having both your parents being filipino i'm sure they speak bit. they, they yeah you, you know they got least, they gotta right? they gotta be speaking to him like especially when he was younger Cause I mean, like I know most of like American Filipinos, like they're gonna speak to their kids in you know, Tagalog, especially when they're younger. Yeah, but he's a Canada though. We don't know what they do in Canada, right? Yeah, but I, I, I'm talking about just his parents. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, what yeah, you're yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think it matters like what what country then, because like Filipinos are very prideful like with yeah. their language. They hold on to it. Like my uncle's been here like for what thirty something years now, and that guy still has a thick Filipino accent. Like he just came from the Philippines like yesterday. Yeah. He yeah. went to high school here, bro. <laughs> yeah, and he's still holding on to that Filipino accent, bro. Like he was just there. Yeah. Now, if your parents are born there, the household for the most part like speaks the language of your nation. Yeah. You know. So that makes sense for sure. I want to hear him sing because a lot of people are on the comment section too is talking about how he's he's a singer himself. Yeah, gotta so check it, it's got to be in English too, right? Because if he doesn't speak Tagalog, then we know it's gonna be English song. Oh no, hundred percent. And, and uh, what he say? It. He's he said uh, in the last video he said on the Mapa one day he does like R and B and rap, mm-hmm. so it's like right in our field, you know. <laughs> okay. Let's take a look. Now, this was easily one of the most challenging projects I've ever had to work on. 
for a lot of reasons. We'll get into that later. But let's start at the beginning. Like, how did I get the opportunity? There is a member on the group called Pablo. This is Pablo's face right here. He does a bit of production himself. So I guess he stumbled across a couple of my YouTube videos. And then he reached out to me. He was like, what's up? I said, what's up? <laughs> he said, you're trying to make something? I said, mm, maybe, perhaps. For the workflow, it was a lot of back and forth DMing. <laughs> and then on occasion, I'd get on a Zoom call with him and his brother, Josh. Here's what Pablo sent me at the very beginning. We just started with the demo file. So all we have here is the top line and the guitar under it. Not to be completely honest, I don't know what they're saying. I'm Filipino. I thought I knew Tagalog. But looking back, apparently I only know Tagalog that's used in a household setting. <laughs> It's like he grew up in my house, man. <laughs> no, that's, that's hilarious. Funny. Everything we talked about, he just like bringing it up. He just brought it straight, he went straight into it. Yeah, yeah he's part of the my catalog cast, y'all. He yeah. knows what we're talking about. Pablo sent yeah. me at the very beginning. We just started with the demo file. So all we have here is the top line and the guitar under it. Not to be completely honest, I don't know what they're saying. I'm Filipino. I thought I knew Tagalog. But looking back, apparently I only know Tagalog that's used in a household setting. <laughs> So if somebody can translate this, yeah, I really different. appreciate it. There's actually a switch up in the song. So it goes from 112 BPM to 112 to 96. I never had to work on a song with the tempo change before. So this was, this was tough for me. We're going to just try to flesh this out because I listened to this once and I'm already really, really stuck. Like, how do we get back there? That's a... What? Oh, that's Josh. And then the chorus, which is 96. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. This is the more higher <laughs> part. Yeah. I don't know if this is supposed to be the rockish part. So I sent him that first idea and it was pretty much wrong. <laughs> so I had the hip hop <laughs> and the rock part switched around. He said it should be similar to We Will Rock You. So I said, oh, okay. So once I realized it was switched the wrong way, then I made this one more rock inspired. Now we have the electric guitars. And then I'm also trying to like keep it a little bit modern. So I use more hip hop sounding drums. We ended up using a lot of this for the end of the song, but for the main chorus, this wasn't it. First chorus, pause, second chorus, pause, and then after the bridge chorus, pause, and then another chorus with continuous beat, like the half, happy one. It's funny because you probably heard me and a bunch of other producers say, simplicity is key. Keep it simple. Don't want to do too much. But for <laughs> them, it's the complete opposite. They want everything. They ask for a lot more <laughs> complexity, which is like really refreshing. Pablo told me usually in K-pop and group songs, whenever there's a change in member, then there's also a change in sound. So for this group, there's like five members. So we're really changing it up every eight bars or so. There's a part later on in the song where they do a dance break. And they told me, you know, you can go crazy because we actually need something to dance to. I'm giving you the perks. I'm giving you the fills. I'm giving you the slides just so that they can do a little of this. Do a little of this. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of these demos. Do I the also had a lot of trouble figuring out the <laughs> verses. Just because the tempo 112 is in this weird spot where it can sound good either half timed or double timed, it can be slow like this. Ooh, sound like I want. Or we can make that twice as fast or something like this. Hmm. Cool. Let me show you some of these attempts. Oh, this attempt was weird. Listen to this one. There was around 10 arrangements, mm. and I think at around arrangement 5 is when we... Yo, you know, you know what's really crazy about this song? It sounds so fire every which way. 
Yeah, like, all the different like, versions, right? Yeah, yeah, like like the rock, the rockish, the the hip hop, like everything he's anything he's like basically you know experimenting with sounds great. It's it's so crazy, and and I can see like the video every single time I hear the the lyrics. You know, even Josh's part, he had a little bit of Josh's part in there as well when he came out the elevator in the suit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's he's like he's doing a really good job explaining like where his mindset was and everything like that. Like it, it's dope to see like what he was thinking and then what Pablo was thinking, right? Yeah. Like, every time he was sending it, and he's like, "Oh, okay, I was completely wrong." Right? He's like he wanted to go with like I would rock you, right? Yeah. So he changed it up. He changed up. I love that he mentions that. I noticed that a lot when we listen to SB19, especially for a boy band. Most boy bands do keep a simple kind of beat. It's very yeah. simplistic. There's not a lot going on. It's usually one type of arrangement, and the tempo usually stays the same. Usually it's an upbeat tempo the entire time. Where what he was talking about, there was like so many different tempo switches, which is like SB19 does that a lot, right? Yes, they do. I yeah. feel like SB19 though, as a boy band, they're more creative with their music uh, than yeah. any other boy band. I think the other boy bands are like, they don't write their songs. I'm pretty sure like Backstreet Boys didn't write none, none of their songs. You know what I mean? They just had like some kind of an instinct too. They just had a bunch of people write their songs and make the beat. They're like, all right, sing. Yeah, and also, but their songs, even if they, even the ones that they probably did write, it's very simple. Like, right? Yeah. I mean, like all of them sound the same, like in the song. It's like they made one song, but then they just did it for each one of their parts. Where like SP19, it sounds like these could be completely different songs with each one of these guys' parts, because they all have different voices, different cadences, like it's all different, but they all go together good. But that's why you need those different tempo switches, like what he was talking about, because all the voices are so different. And it's like all different, like individual artists. It's like putting them in one song. You have to have the tempo switches like that, so it matches better for whoever is that person, like that that part. Like it's like it's like tailor made. Yeah, I feel like they're so creative. Like it's it's hard to even call them a boy band. Honestly, yeah. they just uh, they just a group of their own, you know. Yeah. And you know, like I, what I really liked, uh, like you touched on this a little bit too. Remarkable, the excitement that uh, Simon had when he was like, "They want me." To put all these different sounds together because usually that's not what like artists want like they want like a typical sound you know and he was like he was so excited as a producer because he can just experiment with all types of stuff you know what i mean and just mash it all together that's so dope that's like a such a great collaboration you know like their visions are like very uh similar you know like they're willing to go the next step basically yeah, the, the the complexity, right? Because he was like, that's a refresher that, that he wanted. Yeah. They wanted all the producer, hundred percent. Like yeah. you telling me, I could do whatever I feel like. Like it just mix all types of stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's even crazy. the dance break part because he like was like saying like, oh, yeah, middle, like, we're gonna do a dance yeah. break, right? So just make something that we can dance to. And yeah. he was like, as a producer, I'm sure that he's like, dude, that's like this is what I do. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't let me. Don't tell me I can do a a, a dance break part because I'm gonna murder it. And I can see where the singing comes from because, like, you can even see when he's like putting it together, like, he's almost like kind of singing some of the parts too. Yeah. Right? And I think he's really good at it because, like, uh, what Pablo, what I really like that since we've been watching these is that Pablo, when he sends the reference to him, it's always Pablo playing it already, like an acoustic version to it, right? Because he had the guitar. Yeah. With the singing. guitar, I was just about yeah. to say that too. Yeah. He always sends it with an acoustic version so you could tell, like, what, like, tempo that he was already trying to go with. Mm-hmm. Right, because Pablo's already playing with the cards, so he kept like the same thing. If you hear him when he switches the beat, like yeah. when he's doing it, producing it, he kept like that same kind of like flow that, that like, Pablo had in the acoustic. like tempo, basically, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. which was fire. No, yeah, they they work it together like like they have match made in heaven. But that's that's so funny that like uh, even the guy that hit him up at first, he was like, yeah. "Yo, you should work with this." You know, that's crazy, right? Yeah. It's like, well, I don't know. I don't know. SB19, who was that? You know what I mean? And now look at like how far they came together collaborating. What it almost seemed like he knew who they were, but he was like trying to play it cool. Like, you know, like, he was like, he was like, yeah. he was like, you, uh, you want to do something? He's like, I don't know. Maybe. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like trying to play it cool. Like, you're the producer. You don't want to just seem like ancient. It's like, as soon as a, an You don't want to be a stand. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you got to, you got to like still sound like you're big time, even if you're not big time, right? You got to make it seem like, you know what? let's see if this works kind of thing right but inside he probably was like oh my god like because he even said it like he was like no i'm my background is i'm I'm filipino heritage right both my parents are filipino so to have a filipino group that's like a, a p-pop group that's getting big in the philippines reach out to him and he's in yeah. canada 
and it's not just any group neither like this is like sb19 is shaping to be a legendary group that's gonna bring yeah. a lot of artists out the philippines too so it's not just like a regular group like these guys are like they're gonna they're gonna break down barriers you know yeah i would love to i would love to get i like this guy's personality too like simon like he's such a character like what you he's were talking funny, about earlier sure. right, King, yeah. right i would love to get like this dude on like a live like he, we need to reach out to this dude and see if we can get him on a live see what? if you can like you know get some behind the scene like insight like what he's doing right now and be able to talk to him like pick it because I, I like watching this stuff but i think he would be even really cool to even get on the channel yeah right? we'll have a him. blast with this dude y'all he's For funny sure. let's go simon we're gonna make a song together y'all pinoy yeah. pride let's do this hey somebody said oh yeah my catalog live with simon would be great absolutely yeah was weird listen to this one there was around 10 arrangements and i That's think crazy. at around arrangement five is when we had a good idea of what the song's gonna be and then after that it was just fine-tuning 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 for the first mm -hmm. we ended up going with this really spaced out brass melody Mm, I like that. We layer that with this high lead thing. Woo! For this one, the drums are really simple because we wanted to drop it halfway in. Oh, he's working on that beginning. You you hear that second part? Ooh, yeah. Ooh, he's getting there, yo. I can see a building, yo. That's that's fire. We layer that with this high lead thing. For this one, the drums are really simple because we wanted to drop it halfway in. Same pattern as this one, the first one, but this one is um like Papo's voice is so cut, sweet. And then it's yeah, it no. he reminds me of Michael Jackson, bro. Yeah, it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gets get, get super high, right? That's a great musician, and then when you hear him talk, you're like, "Yo, that's not the same guy." That's not the same guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who's this? Yeah. And then during the second half of the verse, we have the brass melody that does a lot more. like capital siren mm. the drums are doing a lot more as well yeah he's killing this i like every time he's like what his mindset is when he adds all the stuff into this yeah like what you said each of these sound fire like yeah. i can see i can see any of these versions being like the complete version but yeah. like i'm like man like the war like, remix I'll, right yeah. a normal producer would have been fine with any of these like options and then would have just stopped yeah like, oh, yeah this is it right but he's always like, how can I make this better? What else can I add? What else can I do this? Oh, you know what? I'm going to switch the drums up like this, make it a little bit slower, make it faster. Like he's switching it up every time he's trying it, even though it sounds good, he finds a better version of it, right? It's like, he's like continuously working on it, which is dope. Yeah, and I think, I think it's like working with Pablo is, is he kind of gives you that vibe too. You know, like you want to match like his creativity as well. Yeah. Cause Pablo is like very, very creative too. So. Like the energies, you know what I mean? The energies are perfect between them two, between the Michael Jackson of the Philippines. And I can Simon. see, I can see why they worked together so much. Like why, so, why they did so many songs together. You you know who Simon and Pablo reminds me of? Dr. Dre and Michael Jackson. Mm. <laughs> right? What a mixture that is, yo. Jeez, yeah. From the Philippines. <laughs> Pattern as this one, the first one, but this one is, um, like cut cut but this one is confused so. and then during the second half of the verse we have the brass melody that does a lot more like capital siren the drums are doing a lot more as well when in the sand for the second verse, it's really similar to the first verse, except we got rid of the brass and instead we just replaced it with I like that brass, though. every that single brass percussion stuff. known to man. Oh, yeah. This thing, weird filtered percussion loops, more <laughs> percussion loops, glass thingies, snare stuff, whatever this is. 
<laughs> <We're laughs> <really Yeah>. <laughs> I had to throw everything so in there, right? Glitchy toms, more percussion, more fails. <laughs> And then during the second half, it's like the first verse. Here's an example of the workflow. So I just send him a Dropbox link with the song, and then he just sends me back a list of notes. Make it sound grimy. Maybe try a new melody. Maybe put in a new instrument. The car should be a bit I think that should be a first. We decided for the chorus oh, that guys? it should be really big and kind of cinematic. So I added these massive, massive toms to just kind of drive the rhythm. Ooh. And then everything is kind of just following that. Some chance. That's fire. For the intro, they wanted the main melody of the hook, but that turned into this big marching band brass idea. I yeah. think this was the first attempt. They said it sounded a bit too happy. It should be a lot darker. So what I did instead mm. was I kind of rewrote <laughs> the melody so that it sounded a bit darker. Pablo, the original say melody that. is like this. Hey, and then what nice. I did was. Ooh. And then we just put that on a bunch of horns. Then there's a high horn that comes in. And then just some marching band style drums to go with it. Man, one of the reasons this was such a difficult project was because I was being stupid. As you saw before, we went through a bunch of arrangements and different demos. And since I'm so lazy, instead of deleting all these instruments, I just kept adding them onto the project. And then it was just this big file where there's too many plugins and there's too many sounds and every single track in my mixer chain is used up. It was just a lot of me wasting time waiting for stuff to load and then it ended up crashing and I'd lose entire hours just trying to render stuff out. It was a lot of this. A little blue circle and just praying this thing doesn't crash. Mm, <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Like after doing hella work and like not being able to save it. I hope that doesn't happen too many times. That would really like uh, deteriorate the, the productivity, you know? Yeah, hours of work, right? <laughs> Waiting yeah. for it to render just to find out it doesn't load and you lose it. I used to do that too. And when, when you lose it, bro, like it just kills your motivation. But this guy is obviously, he's brilliant. Like he got all the instruments. You can see how he plays the keyboard. He's, he's a beast, but you know it's not a good feeling yeah simon's killing this man this guy this guy is a producer producer like i, I want to see what he sounds like when he does his own stuff because if he's doing this for other people like what is he doing for his own music that's true you know what i mean so he's an artist as well too not just a yeah, producer people people are saying that yeah he sings too you know what's incredible is the part that he did for ken the da -da 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 -da. he even yeah. put that like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Is like Yo, that, that was so amazing to hear it from, like, Pablo, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's brilliant, bro. He's yeah. brilliant. He's like a sharing type of Michael Jackson. He's not just like Michael Jackson, you know, like the star. He shares his talents, you know, and his uh, stuff that he, he writes and composes, which is crazy. I, I was really amazed, like, the, the way he, like, picks each verse for each individual member and knows them by sound so like knows exactly what it's gonna sound like it's, yeah. it's incredible that's what happens when you get a producer that is also a an artist also an instrument player also yeah. just a total musician yeah, it's total everything. all them run <laughs> yeah. no it's amazing to have all those talents like it makes rappers not want to rap no more and makes singers go like oh well i only sing i don't do that much <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like it's right. just you got like a thousand talents, yo. It's not fair. Which is crazy too, cause like somebody like Pablo though, like we 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 talk about his his producing and his writing all the time too. But like there's so many artists that like we don't even realize that produce and do certain things because like everybody only knows them for like like one thing. 
Yeah. But there's like a lot of artists that actually do like a lot of producing, doing a lot, like especially Behind nowadays. The scenes, ghost yeah. writing and everything else. Aisle where there's too many plugins and there's too many sounds and every single track in my mixer chain is used up. It was just a lot of me wasting time waiting for stuff to load and then it ended up crashing and I'd lose entire hours just trying to render stuff out. It was a lot of this. A little blue circle and just praying this thing doesn't crash. No. <laughs> I don't think this one's gonna open. <laughs> Guys, don't be like me. Be organized. Let's take a look at some of the dance break attempts. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Mm. It's a little breakdown in the sand. The drum groove was pretty much there. It was mainly just finding what's gonna be on the top melody. What is this one? Oh, this one. I like this one. This one is hard! Then they wanted the dance break to be twice as long and they told me during the second half just kind of go crazy on the drum arrangement. I ended up doing this thing where like the first half is trap and then the second half is more of like a reggaeton deal. And then there's a bunch of weird like fails on this one. Yeah, like this melody was cool, but it didn't sound like anything from the rest of the song. So we decided that it should kind of sound similar to the intro I made. New horn melody. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no copyright song. Yeah. <laughs> no, no copyright song over here. After that, we have like these high horns that come in. Yeah. High horns. High horns. In the no high copyright horns. song. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Let him copyright. Yo, let them know, yo. Because, you know, uh, I was about to sample that, yo. <laughs> have his voice in the background, right? Uh, no copyright song. <laughs> no copyright song. <laughs> I love it, yo. This dude's like characters, like dope. He's funny. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, we got to get this guy on, on the show, man. Yeah, shout out to Simon, y'all. Let's go. We have like these high horns that come in. High horns, high horns <laughs> in the no copyright song. Okay, okay. No copyright song through the dance. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, <laughs> a lot of back and forth, back and forth. Drop, drop box, blink. Little changes, little changes until we got to like the final product. Let's check the info really quickly. 91 hours and 45 minutes. Are you Ooh. insane? That's like 24, 48, 72, nine. That's almost four entire days. They got it sent for mixing and then they gave it back to me to do a bit of the final mix. And then it got sent off to mastering. And that was everything from my end. And here we are, the premiere day. I haven't seen this yet. 500k views in three hours. That's mm. me. That's my name. <laughs> Let's go. I made this. <laughs> it's, 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 it's kind of hard to believe right now. Yes, sir. It's been three hours. Look at all these reactions. That's... I got to watch all of these. This is going to take up my whole day. <laughs> <laughs> Their fan base is insane. project i've ever been a part of yeah it doesn't it doesn't feel real i have to give a big thank you to pablo for giving me the opportunity shout out to everybody who worked on it if you want to see the full video that's going to be in the description just do a little favor for me and blow it up if you're wondering if we're going to work again the only thing i can say is maybe i don't know Perhaps. I'm gonna watch more reactions now. <laughs> if you have any suggestions, leave a comment. If you like this video, leave a like. If you really like this video, subscribe. If you didn't like this video, leave. Just leave. Just leave. Leave. Leave already. Wait, 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 wait. I always wanted Damn, to do this. Just a little, little of this. Oh. Just a little smirk emoji. Just a little, hmm. Keep it real subtle. Like, I'm so damn cool. Hmm. Whatever. <laughs> 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 so subtle. <laughs> Yo, he deserves it, y'all. Yeah. The beast. What a beast, yo. I mean, I never imagined that the what song could sound like so many different uh, ways, <laughs> you know? And they all sounded dope every single way. That was crazy. I got to get in the studio with this guy, Simon, y'all.
Yeah, he's fire. He's fire. Fire. You know what we need? Because like we, we clearly see that this guy like watches the reaction videos of the songs that he produced. We need <laughs> we like, need all of a watchable. <laughs> go to Simon's uh YouTube channel and just blow up my catalog. Just tell him like <laughs> hey, my catalog just reacted to your what video, right? Of him. He's like, him yeah, you scene. you in four hundred and eighty ninth place because I got four hundred and eighty nine videos to go. <laughs> yeah. Well if if we keep blowing him up, then we're gonna pop up. So then when we might we're, rise in the rankings, yeah. all right? Yeah. yeah. So that way, when we reach out to him, he's gonna know. He's gonna be like, "Hey, man, why do I haven't heard my catalog before? Everybody blew up his channel with my catalog. Go Let find Simon him. Let Simon know. Let Simon know. Let me get up in that studio with him, guys. This is, this is from his page, now. right? Is this from his YouTube page? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so no, he's a, he's a character and a half, y'all. Like he could yeah. easily be doing what we doing right now. Easy. For sure. Like with a ease, but he is obviously a producer, so I would do what he's doing. But oh, he's, yeah, yeah. he's sort of doing both. It's it's really dope. His character is really really nice, and it fits in with Pablo. You know what I mean? Because yeah. uh, Pablo is like very like uh, soft spoken. It seemed like, but people said that he be teasing uh, the other members a lot too. Like he got jokes for days. You know, I like he's it. like you know. I like that he's like he's so easy going, right? And he's like joking all the time. But like when it comes down to like making the beat, like he's down to business. Like everything he was doing, he was taking it seriously. He was like, "Okay, you know what? This is what they look. At. This is what they're asking for. Let me get down to prison real quick and send this exactly. to them." Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This, this he killed it. Absolutely fire, y'all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, all you guys need to go on Simon's thing right now and tell him my catalog is is looking for him. Right? Yes. We looking find for Simon. Right? Where is Simon? Let's hashtag that. Yeah. Where is Simon? Shout out to Simon Servita, absolute beast. And it's so fun watching his videos as well. His videos are so dope. Yeah, man. it's fun, right? Yeah. For sure. He's entertaining. Yo, he's super entertaining, y'all. Yeah. They said that he was a uh, Simon was a guest when SB19 came out to Canada. So that's when they first met each other in person. They did a their concert on Canada. He was a special guest. They they be showing hella love. Don't forget, guys, blow up Simon. Let him know. Yeah. Tell him my catalog is looking for him.